I see that it says recording, so I'm going to call the meeting to order. Um, remind council of the conflict uh, of dec declaration of pecuniary interest if it arises. And uh, the purpose for this meeting is to uh, get some input early in the process here for the budget with regards to uh, what council would like to see um, looked at. So some of our priorities. So the way I was thinking of doing it today is uh, this priority list that was put together when, when I take it as stuff that's been picked up over the last few months, uh, I didn't realize it was being documented. So that's good. It's on here now, uh, some things. And then I'm sure there's other things that uh, I know I had a, a few things on a separate list a lot of them are on this already so i was just thinking i don't know if i've mixed up the order of the pages but uh that maybe was my fault with the photocopying the one page got flipped around it doesn't matter um but i'll just uh so i yeah i just went with the way the hole punches are on here so yeah. the first page has the hpm on the top of it so i thought maybe we could start with that page and go through each item on it and uh you know some of the things i you know i don't remember or you know where they came from but uh it's a good list anyways and it'll uh you know help us get some things on the table so yeah and um, bianca has that um to share as well for the zoom okay that's good okay so um it's a little hard doing it, but I'm going to try it with, uh, maybe we can just do the, if you could put it up, Bianca, the first page there, and we can go through, so, we, so we're all talking about the same page. Um, this list was uh, picked up here. Um, at the end, we'll probably just receive it, but uh, maybe we can go through, and if there's any explanation, or I, it must have came from council, so uh, um, this, First thing on here is the proposal for hiring contract cleaner. We've talked about that for a couple of months now or more. Um, I'm glad to see it's on this list. And uh, I don't know, does council have any questions with regards to that? Uh, I think it's something that we need to get some pricing on or see if we can move ahead with it. Yeah, so uh, just for um, information, there is the um, amount uh, at the end of the paperwork that um, has the proposal of the cost savings. So if council was in agreement in principle of this, then I could um, adjust all the different departments that it affects and see the cost savings in those draft uh, numbers. Okay, that would work out well. What's council think of that? Go ahead, Larry. I can't see Dave and uh, so just if, if I'm not answering you just okay give me no problem <clears throat> can't you, see Mr. Dave or Barry so just so you know okay through you Mr. Mayor there was um, I think when we get ready to do the advertisement for this position if that's council's decision uh, I'm trying to look back quickly here now at some of the requirements of the cleaning and let me see here for an example, um, item number three, where it lists the medical center um, Monday to Friday for cleaning. Well, this, the medical center only operates two days a week presently. So I guess what I'm saying is before we get to the point where we would advertise for this job, uh, a good look at the requirements that uh, HBM would put there for the job. But that would be one little example uh, that I noticed uh, <clears throat> it indicates the medical center uh, Monday to Friday, which only operates two days a week. Um, we do get charged Monday to Friday rates with the current um, contractor. So um, the idea was a lot of the different things like say cleaning windows, cleaning carpets, doing waxings of floors, or walls or extra cleaning due to COVID could be worked into any down potential downtime and, and fill in those hours because that is all extra cost to the original contract that we have now with the contractor. And if we want those types of things done, then those are all extra over and above what our 
daily rate is. Over an extra above what the present contract is, but it could be included in the new contract, right? Yes, yes. So if uh, council was in agreement to hire a staff person, that staff person can do all those extra duties that would cost um, extra money that we're paying now. Excellent. Thank you. So that's, that was the option on the um, under buildings to be added. I know it says contact, but it says with hiring contract staff position. Is that what you mean there? Yeah. Um, okay. Oh, Mr. Mayor, if I might then. Yeah. There's a potential savings of over $12,000 and we would have more, more service. Is that what you're saying, Will? Yeah, so right now we don't have a lot of the window cleaning and all that um, type of work done. So that would potentially, that number would go up by increasing that added service by having more control of a staff member versus a contractor. So one more question. If we move forward, if uh, con uh, council so chooses to move forward with this type of a thing, um, I guess we can decide any time where that co that contract person would fall under which department. We've had discussions that it would potentially fall under facilities, under Ryan. Okay. That's all for me, Mr. Mayor. Our, our, facility, our facility is being moved to Parks and Rec. Or am I getting ahead of the game here? They're in there. Yeah, that's another proposed. It's just for budgetary purposes. It's already under Ryan with Parks and Rec. So uh, cleaner picture budget wise and how much we're spending on all the different buildings. Okay, sorry, you cut out there, Wendlin. So with, who is it with right now? Ryan. Okay, thank you. Larry, you had something? <clears throat> Um, no, I just, uh, I think we're all on the same page here through you, Mr. Mayor, about um, going this direction, but I think when we get closer before it would be advertised, uh, up a real close look at exactly what the requirements are of, for the new position. Uh, I'm leaning towards some of these added extras that would kick the price up should be in, just included in the new contract or the new job description. Yeah, like that's one thing if we hire the person, it won't really affect the price because we can just, we can prioritize what needs to be done. So like you're saying, if it only needs two days a week, like I think what Wendell meant is we'll be able to, we'll have the control because the price will be set, whatever uh, whatever we, we set the rate at, um, we'll be able to uh, send them to what needs done, whether it's like she said, deep cleaning that isn't happening right now. So a lot more flexibility in the process. But uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, but I got the uh, feeling that Wendelin was indicating that uh, the numbers that we see here presently with the savings of $12,000 would change because we were gonna add this extra cleaning. My comment meant was that the extra cleaning would be included in the, the price that she has laid out there. And I think that should be a discussion for council. Thank you. Okay, Wendland, the way I'm reading it here is the uh, the proposed position would cost um, 46 plus 13 yep. supply. So it would already be set. So um, it would be like a staff person to build and we would be, have the control even afterwards. Is yeah. that am I? Yeah, so then we'd have to, um, like nothing's been done for job descriptions or any of that type of um, work has been done until we got the okay from council. But all those things could be added in for the same cost. And then it would be up to Ryan to prioritize and distribute the work throughout the week to where the cleaning needed to be taking place. Sure. That's okay. Thank you. All right. Um, is there anything else on that item from council? Like I say, I can't see Barry and uh, Dave. I don't know if there's anything I can do, Bianca, to uh, see everyone when it's on the split screen, but uh, um, if they can just yell when they want to speak, it'll uh, make it easier for me. I'm Yo. good with that. Yo. Yo. <laughs>
Oh, there, when you speak, it does come up. So okay. now I can't see art. So that's how I guess it's going to work. It only allows four on the screen here right now. All right. Um, do, we have any, do we have anybody, Wendelin, that is in mind for to, uh, for to do this job, or is it just going to be go out to tender? Um, it, there we it are. should be advertised as per the personnel bylaw in the community. Okay, I would. I just wondered because you got the figures there, and I thought maybe you had a good cleaner in mind. No, it's just um, a proposal. It's um, it would still have to follow the proper procedures of being advertised and have interviews and and all those types of things. Right on. And then there would have to be proper notice given to the contractor when council so desired to have that put in place. And the, insurance, the insurance would fall under us? WSIB and everything would fall under us, yes. Okay, Dave? I think that was one of my questions to win on, but there would be, would there be a benefit package? No. Okay, no, that's, what, that's was my question, yeah. Okay, thank you. to the bylaw, um, position, a contract, and animal control. It's a contract with yeah. no benefits. Thank you. Okay. So, Barry, go ahead. Yeah. So, do we have to supply WSIB, or is that their yeah. responsibility? No, we have to supply WSIB. Good. Okay, because I know we didn't have it for the buyer or for the the uh, all small animal control until just the last. Yeah, so we went through that process and it was deemed that, yes, WSIB is applicable in those contract positions. Okay. Okay. Fine. All right. The next item so on here. Work that into the fur further draft budgets and that should see a cost savings within the different departments that um, it affects. Good. Dave, go ahead. I know you'd like to move on, Mr. Mayor. How is the process going to work today? Are we going to give staff direction today or are we just going to follow through and then come back to it? I think it'll just be for receiving this today and, uh, you know, have more time to talk to staff about it. And it'll, you know, it can come back as a, as a, a note on the next discussion for those departments. Uh, staff can put them into certain departments and then we can deal with the the final part of it there. So, okay, one one. Yeah. All right. So the next one was about creating a new department for budgetary purposes, and um, this is regards to the uh, well, it would be this position and the facilities. Uh, um, so I guess it just kind of ties in with the last item there. Yes. So, so that'll give us a better idea what it looks like, and um, yeah. So that's that's. That should be pretty straightforward. Is that okay with everyone? Yep. Okay. Um, the next is administration and council, and it's with regards to the food bank and uh, um, with with regards to renting or finding one of our buildings. Go ahead, Hart. No, I just on the the creating a new department. Are we not getting into that now, or are we just? Well, it's kind of tied in with the other one. It was basically the facilities and tying it in with uh, parks and rec. I think, isn't it, Wendelin? Yeah, so with facilities like under the parks and rec budget now, there's town hall, stone hall, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But also in the administration budget, we have uh, building repairs in the administration budget. We have the medical yeah. center. So it's just to combine all those um, building repairs, the cleaning and any maintenance to those buildings so that council got a clearer and more concise um, snapshot of what it costs us to run the different buildings. So it would bring everything into one? Yeah. So there would be money shifted out of admin for building uh, maintenance for this building that we're in now, and it would all go into facilities. And then uh, all the buildings that Ryan looks after would be captured in that budget. So in, in terms of the money getting shifted out of 
say parks and rec to the new one how would we determine what that number would be from so we have year? numbers already in there in the draft budget so those would just move into a new budget okay just isolates it more so we can get a better picture because it's kind of all over in bits and pieces all over and so we thought as a management team, it would be easier for council to understand how much it's costing to run the different buildings. And and when the new department's created, who will oversee that department? It still stays with Ryan, because Ryan right now manages all those different buildings. But it's, so it's all, just, it's so all just, over, like library not, has their uh, amount in there for building and then <clears throat> Do, do, do we not already have a facility? I'm just confused here that we've we already have a facility separated out. So now it seems like we're separating a second facilities group here. No, I, or am I wrong? They're throughout all different departments. Facilities but that Ryan, are yeah, but so, Ryan so, so, basic, all so basically we're not creating a new department, we're just expanding the facilities department. Right, we're not creating a new department, we're just creating it for budgetary purposes so that council can see a clear, cleaner picture of what it costs to run the buildings. Yeah, like right now, there's a facilities that does a lot of the repairs and everything, but there's a lot of things in different areas. It's just bringing everything under one, under <clears throat> the facilities instead of having it spread out. There's Bob wanted to say something and then Larry. And I'll come back to you then, Hart. Yes, sorry, through you, Mayor Martin, and just to uh, to clarify for Councillor Webb and for Council. Uh, so this is this create this notion of creating a new department. It's simply a paper exercise. Um, so we're creating basically a new budget account called facilities, which will isolate all facility repair and activity for facility repair, and uh, which makes it an easier an easier look for everyone to see what we're spending. Um, and it's kind of an offshoot of the, uh, of the facilities and condition assessment study that was done. So we can easier track uh, what's been done based on that, that study. So it's just a paper exercise. We're not creating a new department. Nobody's responsibilities are changing. It's just a paper exercise. So we can better track the expenses for facilities repair and maintenance. Let's just streamline your reporting then, basically. You broke up a little bit there. Oh, I just said it's basically to streamline the reporting. Yeah, that is absolutely that. correct. That is, that is absolutely correct. Okay. Hey, well, thank, thank you. I just, I was confused because when I see new department, I don't, I don't know. So I just wanted to ask. No, fair question. So, thank you. Larry, you had something there? That's through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, CAO Ancioni has answered the question. Um, it's basically a benefit. I see it as a benefit, both the staff and council. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's just cleaning up some things there. So is that okay with council then? And we can go on to the next one or? Okay. All right, administration council. And then it was talking about the food bank rental um, and uh, investigating finding some municipal space. Um, so historically, the um, food bank rent came from council initiatives. So it was the direction from the last budget to bring this into the operating budget instead of taking it from the reserve. So council has asked like, you know, um, should it come from the reserve or should it come from operating? That's council's decision and then the discussion came up about can we find room in one of the buildings that the municipality owns instead of paying the rent? Okay. Um, yeah, so we had a lot of discussion when we moved it out of the town hall. We didn't have any space anywhere else and it was supposed to go somewhere else. And um, luckily we were able to find a place um, in town um, but other than that, I don't know where we could put it right now. Uh, Hart, go ahead. So I just had a question because I'm, I'm not super familiar with the food bank, unfortunately. But how much space do we need to operate that? Like, 
is it a, a room, like a room, two rooms, or do we need? I don't, I don't know. Do you need like? Do we, it's it's do need, pretty. Does there need to be fridges there? Like yeah, yeah. There's fridges and freezers and um, yeah. So I don't know how many square feet it is, Bob. Do you do you have any idea? Right through you, Mayor Martin. I don't have that off the top of my head. Um, but it is something we'll bring that to a future council meeting. We'll clarify that for council. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That would be the best. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Dave, go ahead. Um, I don't know who brought this forward, but I, I think it's a great idea if we could find a spot. Um, if we can, that's great. If we, I don't know where it would be, but maybe somebody has an idea where it could be. Uh, it'll have to be accessible and so on. The other thing is, if we're going to continue, and I assume we're going to, I would rather see this come into the operating budget. I, I, I don't like stuff going into reserves to pay for this kind of thing. That's that's not what reserves are for. That's my own only suggestion. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I don't uh, think it should come from reserves. And um, as far as the buildings, like we did spend a lot of time on this when, when we had to move it out. And the accessibility was a big thing. Um, trying to have an accessible space, which we didn't have any at the time, and I don't know if it's changed any, but uh, um, anyways, it's something to look at, but if you could move it into another, I, I don't think Barry likes it in council initiatives, so I'm just kidding, Barry, but uh, anyways, it's uh, it's not really the right spot to have it. It is, It has been ongoing, so um, it probably should come out of another source, but uh, um, did you have your hand up, Barry, or I seen Larry, I think. Go ahead, Larry. <clears throat> Through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, what this does do is indicate or show council there is a cost there. And it's a oh, yeah. cost. Uh, we do have facilities, and I think we've had this discussion before, uh, and I think it's time, <clears throat> excuse me, that council got serious about uh, one of those facilities for sure. Uh, and eliminate the cost of the $7,000 for rent. It's time to make that move. Um, yes, further discussion, and we need to have a look at how much room they actually need uh, and go from there with one of the municipalities buildings that we have that is already accessible. Uh, we all know where one is. Um, down below the library, we've looked at that building. There's lots of room down in there. And we have several things that uh, we've indicated that could be utilized in that space. And I think most definitely now we're in budget and it's time to take that step and look and make a move. Okay. All right. So that can come back anyways uh, to see what we can do uh, with that space. Um, go ahead, Bob. For you, Mayor Martin. Uh, yes, staff, uh, further to comments from Councillor Ellis, staff has been brainstorming some possible opportunities for a, a move for, for the food bank. We will, uh, we will be discussing that further at our next management team meeting and we will be bringing forward a proposal. Okay. All right then. Um, is there anything else with regards to that? Okay, we can move on to the next about moving economic development costs to the planning budget. Uh, it seems to make sense to me. I, um, you know, to keep everything in one department. I don't know what council's thoughts are. I, anybody got any comments to that to that item? Go ahead, Larry. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, expenses uh, from administration to. Uh, as we all know from our, uh, and this I might be out in the left field here with this, but I need to ask it anyway. Uh, through our um, uh, virtual meeting that we had where the Chamber of Commerce came forward with all the good things and the different directions that they're going, which involves a lot of economic development uh, it, through the Chamber. I'm just wondering if there should be some discussion about costs uh, from the chamber, from economic development, uh, as we talk here on the, uh, the list of the move of economic development expenses. 
Should that be a topic? For the chamber, the chamber has nothing to do with our budget though. Well, I'm, maybe I'm suggesting that we could have a discussion regarding that. It's a totally separate entity, but it's up to council here. Um, it has nothing to do with council. We're just a, a, we just keep an eye on it, but it has nothing to do with us. We just try to work with them the best we can, but it's up to council here um, if you have any comments on that. I guess maybe I'm asking a question out of a lack of experience and knowledge through the chamber. I realize it's a separate entity. Um, anyway, there's, there's some items coming forward where they're looking for support from council. And I guess what I was thinking when I read this, uh, move economic development expenses from admin to, anyway, uh, it's a topic that we can have another time, but I just wanted to ask that. And again, it's probably my inexperience of knowing the chamber's separate entity. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, there's, so those things, the way they've come forward in the past is if there's a way we can help them, we've tried to, and that's something that we've used council initiatives for before. Um, but we just have to make sure we keep them as a separate entity um, and not tie them into our budget or we'll be into a yeah, problem. That's, 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 that's fair. Thank you. Okay. Um, did I see any other hands up with regards to that? I think this is another thing to just uh, clean some things up and make it easier for us to understand where funds are going. Bob, go ahead. All right, through you, Mayor Martin, just to address the... Uh... The item from Councillor Ellis, if I'm understanding correctly, I I suggest to Council that we could, in fact, any support that we may offer to the Chamber um, through whatever initiative it may be, we could include in our economic development budget. Yeah. Thank you, Bob. And that would work too, like you say, Bob, you, like instead of Council initiatives, there could be a little fund in there to try and help uh, anything that pops up, I guess. Um, so, Dave, go ahead. Well, I disagree with that. I'm all for economic development, and we do need a budget for economic development. But I think you're stepping out the realm outside the box here when you're taking taxpayers' money and converting it into a chamber of commerce. Economic development is different. Yeah. In my opinion. So yeah, and that's good. We won't get into it today, but it's just that's the options that are there. But uh, um, right now we're using council initiatives, uh, and that's a one-off thing here and there. And we can leave it that way. That's probably the easiest way to do it. But there's uh, so for today, it was just uh, the economic development and planning, putting them in the same department, and um, the chamber will keep it separate. Does that work? Okay. All right, I don't want to, is there, is there any other, go ahead, Barry. And you said, <clears throat> excuse me, you're gonna keep the uh, chamber separate. Well, it, it's it's definitely separate. Um, I have to go along with Deputy Manager O and, and yourself. You know, it's something that the chamber should fly on their own. I know we've helped them out trying to get them started, but, uh, it is taxpayers' dollars, and, and that's outside the stepping outside the box. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, yeah, so we'll just uh, leave it at that. And if you can look at uh, shifting the departments together there, I think council is okay with that part of it as far as economic development. And uh, go ahead, Bob. Sorry, through you, Mayor Martin, just one last comment regarding that item. I think I think it would depend on, on the, the specifics of the request, and I think any request that comes, whether it's from the chamber or other group in the community, uh, would be dealt with on a uh, on an individual basis. So, if it's it is an economic development item, if it is, it would certainly be appropriate to put it in that budget. Okay. Okay, Dave. I just want a clarification on that. Are you saying that we're going to have a line item in our budget for the chamber of commerce? No. No, well, that's good because I no, don't want to see through, that. No, no, through you, Mayor Martin. No, that's not what I'm suggesting. I'm just suggesting any requests that may come for support from council, depending on the nature of that request, those items could perhaps be in, be included in an economic development budget, depending on the nature of the request. 
and we can leave it like it is now and use council initiatives, whatever. That's a one-off thing. That's what it was kind of created for. Is it, it's up to, you know, up, depending on what comes in. So, um, but it's for, right now the economic development and the planning, if they were merged together there, um, it probably would be easier for council to keep an eye on that and keep it in one department. So Larry, you had something? Just one last comment so we can get moving on here. Um, in regards to CAO Bob's comment on economic development, just um, my thoughts are the economic development when it, come, when it comes from the Chamber of Commerce is an investment in your municipality. And I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Okay. All right, then. Um, the next uh, item we have on here is uh, with regards to animal control. And I know it's kind of a active thing that I think staff's already looking into it. And the cap bylaw is just something that I think, uh, I don't know whether it really needs to be on here or if it's something that it's, we're gonna have to deal with it one way or another, but I don't know, I think it's a, um, I think when we get to animal control part of the budget, we can maybe tie that into it. Uh, um, I think we're gonna have some good discussion on that too. So, um, so I think personally, we can just bypass that one and we'll just tie it in with the, with animal control when we get into the meat of the budget. What do you think, Barry? So um, anyways, next, uh, we did talk about facilities already and I think that's already been dealt with, uh, Wendlin? Yes. So moving into the fire uh, um, line here with the complete fire master plan. I don't know where that came from, but... Uh, um, so I guess there's been it's been quite a number of years since the last fire master plan was completed. I don't have a year available to me. <clears throat> so it's just okay. um, a proposal from the fire chief that that should be completed. And then he also wanted um, council to be aware that some of the fire, fire vehicles that will need to be replaced in future years the costs have significantly gone up due to the US dollar, tariffs, et cetera, in the marketplace. So there will have to be some reallocation there and some thought given to maybe increasing the allocation to the reserve to make sure we have the proper monies available. Okay, and that's, some, that's something that I think we're going to find as we move forward and even roads, uh, the equipment prices are going up so much that we're going to have to keep an eye on our reserves to make sure that we're uh, keeping enough in there to replace these vehicles. So yeah. I think that's something, you know, that's just, we're going to have to do it. And that's, uh, that'll be a part of the budget too. Uh, um, it's a good reminder here, I guess, that's all. Yeah, so just to uh, it was just a fact to keep in mind that if there's any um, extra monies within the whole of the budget that we could potentially um, funnel some of those monies to avoid um, shortfalls in the future in that reserve. Okay. All right. Is there any questions or comments with regards to the fire? Go ahead, Dave. Uh, I think when we uh, get to talk to the fire chief, we could ask the questions about the fire ma about the master plan. I know it's been a long time since we've done one and I forget what it all detailed, but I would like to ask him that questions when we get the opportunity. Thank you. Okay. Barry, go ahead. Yeah, that was my question too. <clears throat> master plan. Any idea on what it would cost, you know, for a master plan for the Fire department, and has anyone seen the uh, the old master plan? And can we touch it up ourselves, or you know, how much has changed? I have no so idea. So, so oh, go ahead, Wendell. Yeah. So we have a figure of forty thousand dollars <throat> for the fire plan. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right then. Can we look at the old master plan? What's that? 
say, can we look at the old master plan and maybe <laughs> <laughs> photocopy it? Yeah. Where did that come from, uh, Wendland? The fire chief had um, proposed that. So I don't have a copy of the previous sure. master plan. He okay. would have. So that's something, Bob, we can ask the fire chief if we can get a copy of the old master plan. And yes. I didn't even know there was one. So I knew we have our own master plan, but I didn't realize the fire department had a separate one. Yes, through you, Mayor Martin, I, I think this this conversation is a bit premature. Uh, this is this is not a council priority item for today's discussion. Um, this one can wait till later. That's good. Okay. Was there anybody else? Uh, go ahead, Larry, and then Hart. Um, well, just a quick comment here. You know, this uh, fire department budget, um, we've all just had brief time to have a look at it, but there's a number of items that may stand out that needs some clarification and it all comes back to cost, uh, direct cost of labor and so on. So at some point, uh, well, I know we'll have a, another discussion about the fire department budget. Um, yeah. I asked Gwendolyn the other day, and it doesn't necessarily mean just fire department, but where there in the previous budget was money in a budget for certain items and was never spent or some not spent and how that money is wrapped back into the municipality's uh, coffers because uh, it's not hard to find numbers that indicate that was budgeted for in the previous budget and we know that that part of the budget that number or money was not spent so yeah um, anyway yeah. discussion for another time on the fire department so there's a number of, of uh, numbers there that that uh, need to have a look Thank you. Yeah, yeah, and that's what will happen when we get to the individual departments. Um, the last couple of meetings, until we get the whole budget, we really can't even do the budget. We have to get the whole thing in front of us, and we have to know. I don't even know what the overall, like, are we looking at a 3% increase, a 5% increase, a 20% increase? I haven't seen the whole thing yet. I'm just seeing departments. So until we get that, then we can get into separate departments and try and uh, narrow it down. Hopefully staff brings us a budget that's like we, we did to Crow uh, the other day and it came in so good. They spent so much time on it that there wasn't a lot that we had left to do on it. It was, uh, um, it's going to be coming to council already. So I think it's like a 1% or 1.5% increase, which we haven't seen for years. So um, anyways, hopefully staff has a a good handle on things and we get some, you know, a realistic budget coming to us that there won't be a lot to, uh, to do. So uh, we'll see where that goes. But um, so for today, this like, like uh, Bob said, it's, uh, this is something for another day. This isn't a council priority. It's, uh, um, but we will need to understand it better when we get into the fire department uh, part of the budget. So Hart, go ahead. Yeah, um, I agree with Larry's previous comments in terms of having a closer look at that. And when, in terms of uh, reserve sits, not in terms of the total number, but what are we looking at in terms of per per percentage increase? Like, has Ray talked to you about that? Like, what do you like to point to reserve? In the range? Because I'm just looking, well, I'm just looking at what's there now. And when I look at the other departments, um, their reserve isn't too much higher than some of these other, what are, to me, much smaller departments. So it would seem like there's some kind of shortfall yeah, so there. So the fire departments just looking at over a 7% increase right now. And that's the okay, help. But I'm saying increase. what you said in, 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 in here, yeah. Like he's looking for an increase to the reserve. So what would be the increase to the reserve, 7%? We No, we haven't uh, discussed that portion okay. of it. So that's okay. just where the discussion point was. Okay. That's yeah, just because just looking at the number there, the, the percentage might be substantial from what I'm looking at. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, Dave, go ahead. Yeah, just quickly, I, I think I th you're right. We have to talk to Ray. There's a lot of stuff in the background here. We don't realize there's a lot of stuff that's coming forward that, that might be there that we don't know about yet. Yeah, and, and that's kind of why we're in early on this. For, we've yeah. never done this before as far as um, 
council has their own things that they would like to see and at least entertain. Um, and that's what today is all about is to get our, you know, our wish list. And that's, we used to call it a wish list. And a lot of it will be a wish list, but uh, um, we've got some things on here that we can see if it's too big a wish or if it's something that can be worked on. So, um, so we'll just keep motoring through here. And, and then we'll go individually with everyone. If, if their item isn't on here, um, you know, we can bring them up at the end too. So, um, so the next, uh, is that okay with the fire then? We'll just, we'll get into the meat of that when we get into um, the fire budget. But the next part is parks and recreation. And we've had some discussion with regards to docks and uh, um, the recreation master plan has a lot of things in it that are going to come forward uh, in the next couple of meetings. I'm not sure when it's coming, Bob, but uh, it'd be nice to be prepared in this budget for some of the things like that were proposed in it or were suggested in it that would be nice. And uh, the uh, splash pad was another item in there that uh, I had that on my list as far as looking at uh, some sort of design and uh, plan for the future. So um does council have anything here i i can see it. oh there you go i said i could see everyone but dave but uh anyways uh so these two items that are on here with regard to recreation and parks is there any comments or ideas here go ahead dave i don't think it's any secret they, they everybody knows who put the boat launches and the docks on there that would be me um <laughs> I'm not going to give up on it. I've uh, brought this forward for the last several budgets. I think when we have boat launches and we supply, you know, porta potties and garbage cans, not only the next step is a decent dock, but it's a safety feature. And uh, I know I've talked to Winland and she says the insurance goes up if you put docks in. And I do understand that. I don't dispute that a bit, but. If you're talking about economic development and you want people to come into the 10 lakes, you're not going to supply them what they need to get in and out of the lake. They're not going to be here. So, and I think it's a safety factor. That's all I got to say. I've, I've brought enough enough. I'm going to just lay low. Yeah. Okay. Barry, go ahead. Yeah. The only thing is with, with uh, docks up your <clears throat> boat launches, like take uh, Brown Lake, for instance where you can get about three trucks and trailers in there. Are we gonna create the same problem that we have down a mile of memories? You know, like, uh, and, and not only that, then you have to add, you added uh, manpower for to put the docks in and you have to take them out in the fall. Um, and if anything happens, if somebody falls off a dock, you know, we're, we're liable. I, it sure it would be great, but the whole thing of it is, it's 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 something we're going to create another uh, parking problem, and uh, we've already spent a heck of a pile of money this year on on miles of memories, just having uh, staff down there on the weekends. So take it for what it's worth, but I, I'm I'm against it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Hart, go ahead, and then or, and then Dave. Yeah, I was just going to say I I see both sides of the issue. Um, I see the need for docks or from people, um, but I also see Councillor Palmer's point in terms of some of these areas where the docks might get put in um, don't have a lot of parking space. Um, the only thing I'd like to offer is the one thing I think we should take care of is the caution of a dock. That's been something that kicked around here for a number of years. Um, I think there's pretty much total agreement, if not close to that, in terms of replacing it. So I think we need to, you know, get a hold of the ministry and fit, find out what the liability issues are there. But I'd like to see us at least proceed with that project. And then in terms of docks at Round Lake and other places, I think, you know, moving forward consultation with the lake associations and people in the area might give us a better feel for what they want. So, okay, but Dave. I'd be in favor of us moving forward. Sorry. Yeah, that's good. Um, Dave? Oh, just uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, just to rebuttal on that. I mean, uh, 
we can uh, sit here all day and say all the things that are bad, but uh, you know, there was a statement made about people playing hockey and that's what they like to do. People like to figure skate, that's what they like to do. People like to fish, that's what they like to do. And they like to get in and out of the water safely. And uh, creating all these problems about parking, we don't know that. All I'm asking is to try one somewhere to see if it works. If it don't, take it out. Yeah, that's that. Uh, uh, we, we've asked the cottage associations. It's a 50-50 deal. You can't please everybody. Make yeah. a commitment. That's a fair statement. Uh, Larry, go ahead. You're muted. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Um, I think we need some consultation. I'm already getting feedback from some of the lake associations regarding this item because people are aware. Um, so before there, any decision would be made here, I think we need to hear from the lake associations. Um, we have to remember the lake associations uh, pay our municipality a large uh, tax base. And um, the feeling I've got so far, uh, because I did put some figures out there to find out the feelings from all the lakes, and I'm not getting anybody too much in favor of putting docks in. Um, so before we would make that decision, uh, I think we need some consultation from the lake associations. And as far as the one at Kosh Lake, uh, I'm not in favor of taking taxpayers' dollars at this point uh, until we hear from the MNR. Uh, I believe my feeling is the MNR is the guy that should be putting the bill, put a new dock in, put the bill. Um, so I'll leave it at that, but I think before any decision is made uh, that we need to hear from the Lake Associations. And Economic development spinoff, yeah, we can, we know if somebody's coming fishing, yeah, they may get some gas, they may stop for a burger somewhere. Um, but the main thing is they want to come, they hear Belmont Lake, for an example, or Round Lake, Kosh Lake, great fishing for pickerel. Well, that's nice. Not saying, but uh, to take tax dollars and, and put uh, docking in, um, that's a different, that's another other topic. So if, before I would be in favor of doing anything, I think we need to um, get the feedback from the public on it. Yeah, we, we will do that. We've done that already. We've talked to them numerous times. And like Dave said, it was 50-50 thing as far as uh, um, any comments that I've heard also. But the one at Kosh Lake, we have a lot of cottages on that island over there. And if MNR is not going to help them, we might have to talk to MNR the same as we do with other things and say the same as we do with the library. It was MNR property, but we took it over. Same as the beach. We took it over from MNR. Um, there's a lot of cottages on that island that somebody's going to get hurt, and I don't know who's the deepest pocket, but somebody's going to come back and uh, be paying for somebody getting hurt. So that was on the um, on the public uh, meeting too. So it's just something that's on here right now, and we can uh, you know see where it goes as far as when we get into. Once it comes up on here, there will be people talking about it, like you say, Larry, and. Uh, we may hear some different things, but right now it's uh, um, it's just on there, to, and that's what this is all about: is see what council's looking at or listening to, and see what comes when we get to that part of the budget. Go ahead. Yeah, just one last quick one, so we can move on. Any idea how many cottages there are on the islands that uh, require this seminar dock? I would be guessing at forty. Maybe, I'm just guessing, 40, 45, I'm not sure. It's a mile long, the island, so two-sided. So anyways, okay. All right then, and uh, like I said, as part of the, the recreation master plan, there's gonna be some things coming forward and that's where the splash pad idea came from as far as starting to get something rolling as far as a design or a, a plan in place so um, we can, you know, if, if it's okay to leave that, I would like to see that left on there. That was off my list actually, but uh, 
um, we'll see where it ends up in, in the end, is my thought. So is there anything else there? Go ahead, Larry. Just one last comment. I don't want to get moving on here. I, my my uh, thoughts are the splash pad should be moved to the top of the list, not underneath docks and so on. Yeah, like they're they're in the parks and rec area, so they're they're just you know they're okay. That's, it's in there anyways, and there'll be more discussion on it later. Like I say, this is just getting it out there. Public. That's gonna, not my preference. No, no, that's uh, yeah. Yeah, so we can decide on which, whether it's first or second, or um, maybe it goes under council initiative. So um, anyways, <laughs> we'll uh, move on to planning here. And I think this goes along with what we talked about already, um, Wendelin. Yeah, and there was some additional um, items that Laura had uh, given me for council to consider in 2021 the fishing derby and the list that you see. And the thing that she said there is don't get too excited as far as like with COVID and things going on. Yep. These may not be able to happen, but uh, she would like to be prepared and hope that they can happen. So, um, you know, I think that's uh, fair enough. And there's some great ideas here for the community. So <clears throat> go ahead, Barry, and then Hart. Yeah, the one thing I had here was uh, business birthday parties. Like that's what what goes on there. Does anybody have any idea? Does every business have a birthday party once a year? And uh, yeah, right, Mark, do you want to answer that? That was that was a program kind of uh, she was going to start. Barry had to go around try and find out what day the businesses started and then go around and visit them on I guess would be the birthday of their their business uh, kind of get out in the community to try and you know get staff and she'd probably take a council member maybe the mayor or somebody with them as well just to try and get us out in the community to, and um, talking to businesses and whatnot so I think she made the pitch there a month or two ago to us about it I don't, I don't like know if, I, I don't know if it would be an ongoing thing Barry I think more than anything, it would maybe be to help Laura, you know, become familiar with a lot of these businesses and, and owners and whatnot. So, I, you know, if you ask me, I don't know, maybe a year or two, I don't know if it'd be something that would run for 10 or 15 years or anything, but I think it'd be nice. You know, we have a lot of new businesses here in the community in the last four or five years, and uh, they might not be familiar with Laura or what the town has to offer them in terms of help for economic development. So I don't think it's a great deal of money. I think it's worth a try, so. Be a lot of birthday cakes. Possibly, Keep or tarts. The, uh, yeah, so I've seen Larry and then Dave. Mr. Mr. Mayor, uh, to Hart, um, was there discussion, Hart, um, regarding uh, welcoming new business versus yeah. uh, anniversary dates? It's on there. Yeah, yeah, I think, I think, yeah, but good question, Larry. Yeah, but I think that's all part of it. It's just, it's, it's just basically, I don't know, I, from talking to some of the businesses, they feel in the past that they're, they haven't been reached out to by the town. So it's, this is kind of our reach out to some of these businesses that maybe we haven't been in contact with in the past. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. We haven't tried it. We, uh, Laura and I would like to try it. So, yeah, I'll leave that, let that for council. I think it's a good idea, but uh, I know we've been criticized a wee bit about yep. new businesses coming in and not, not being recognized. So I think it goes hand in hand with what you guys are doing. I think it's great. Yeah, no, and 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 just to Councillor Pomeroy's point, hopefully we don't spend the fifteen hundred dollars. Hopefully we're we're more, you know, that's just a, an upset limit. So, like I said, Laura. Laura's idea would be to show up with you know, a dozen, some donuts and coffee. So unless we're going to go and visit, you know, two or 300 businesses, I don't think donuts and coffee should run us too high a bill. So. Okay. Dave, do you have something? Yeah. Thanks to you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, when Laura brought this out the first time, I, I took a look at it and I thought, Oh, jeepers. I don't know. She's, you know, she's got a new business. She's, she's going to be busy. And that gave us some really serious thought. When we got it again, I, th I think it's a good idea. Um, 
at least a one go around here and then she'll have enough feedback to say we will continue it or whether we want. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, I, I think we should reach out to businesses, that's for sure. That's my thought anyway. Yeah, once we get into the budget discussion, I think like it does say on there, the business welcome $400 and business birthday 1500. We might be able to just put the 1500 into a welcome or a birthday and uh, um, see how it goes for a year. Like but we can get into that as far as the specific uh, dollar amount uh, into the budget, but uh, um, it's a great idea. It's uh, um, something that seems to have flipped in the last little while as far as ribbon cuttings for business openings, but uh, um, it'd be nice to see that pick back up again. So, Bob, I seen you light up there, so that usually means you want to say something. <laughs> yes, through you, Mayor Martin. Um... This is a proposal that was brought forward by the economic development officer and uh, obviously has uh, a little bit of support from council. However, I, I just might remind council that our intention today was to talk about council priorities. Uh, some of these items are items that have been brought forward by staff and will be discussed during the department budgets. Um, so perhaps if we, if council wishes to bring forward their priorities and then staff will take them back and put some numbers to those priorities. And then we will come back and have a, a discussion regarding the numbers. Okay, that's fair enough. So are you saying to not go through the rest of the list or do you wanna just uh, go, want me to go around the table now? Some of the things are on the list. We can go around the table now and just get the priorities from council. Um, right, through, through you, Mayor Martin. You're right. Some of these items are on the list, but I think if you if you just go around the table with your council colleagues, and then we will we will bring our our list back after we do our homework. Okay. All right. Okay. Is that okay with council? Then we'll uh, we'll do that, and that'll speed things up here as far as uh, getting it on. Some of them are already on the list, um, so there might be a bit repetitive, but it's. Uh, um, you know, if we if I could go around the table here and just uh, even if you've got it on this list, bring it up anyways, and then uh, we know where we stand as far as uh, what your thoughts are for next year. So um, I'll start with Deputy Mayor Duro and uh, put him on the spot first, and then <laughs> yeah, I'm sure the doc was top on his list, so he can start with that, and then he can move. No, no, I said all I'm going to say on docs. I've did I I. I push as hard as I can push, so I'll just uh, leave that to council's discretion. Uh, I just remind uh, that the cottagers don't own the lakes. That's all I got to say about that. So the other thing that I would like to see is because COVID has really put a, a, an impact on the people walking. I see people walking from, let's say the eighth line, they come through the old, where the new road we put in or the new pipe we put into the, the water uh, facility at the well three. They walk from there to the Rotary Park and they walk across town into the Matheson property and they walk all over there. And uh, I haven't, because of my knees, haven't had an opportunity to walk very far in the Matheson property. From what I've been told, it's pretty rough shape. And I like to see us spend some money on the trails in there, the walking trails. Um, I know there's, we need to get uh, um, a discussion going to get the motorized vehicles on a single path through there and keep them on there. But we need to spend some money on the walking trails. I think it's being utilized now and I think it would be a great asset. It would be a great economic driver to for the municipality for that Matheson property to have some great walking trails in there that are nice trails to walk without breaking your ankle on rocks and logs. And uh, any municipality that I've talked to that has those trails, they're, they're getting a lot of visitors. So that's one of my, that's the only really thing that other than I want, uh, I want our, our our different departments to get the best budget possible. Uh, I know we talk about, uh, you know, uh, squeezing the budget, squeezing the penny because people are hurting, but we got to give them the tools to work with. So 
That's the only thing I have that I'd like to add. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dave. Um, so I'll go to Councillor Ellis. Uh, I'm just gonna go around the screen here. So I don't know how your screen, I always wonder if everybody's screen looks the same because um, anyways, I've got next uh, Councillor Ellis. You're muted. I don't it's have a. It's no. better to be safe and be muted than to leave it on and, and say things that you don't want said. So. If I leave it on, you can hear the birds chirping in the background. Okay, go ahead. Um, I don't have a great list. As any other budget, I always focus on the, the operation of the municipality and, and look to all departments to do their job and come back with good numbers. And we're, I know we're early in the budget, but we're already looking at some departments that are not in line with inflation. And that to me is always our goal, we should never be above inflation. I know we have some departments that have unusual circumstance, whatever, uh, but that's my focus. Uh, one of the things uh, that I've mentioned before in the past is tracking our costs and utilizing the funding from COVID. Uh, so we're not hitting tax dollars or to cover certain things when we have COVID funding available. So I'm looking to Wendland to make sure that we're tracking well there and I believe we are. Uh, Deputy Mayor Giroux has indicated the Matheson property. Uh, I definitely think we gotta take a real good look at that property, something that was given to us for to look after um, and I remember way back when we first inherited that, we had discussion whether we would allow motorized vehicles in there. I think that should be a topic again with council because we all see what's going on. Um, some of my requests are in the roads budgets. Um, um, the last thing I would say that I brought forward uh, uh, and it's identified a little bit further back in our documents so far as uh, the Chamber of Commerce kiosk and what that Chamber of Commerce has tried to do and are trying to do uh, through economic development. Um, we had some discussion about giving them a permanent washroom facility rather than a porta potty stuck there just not set uh, good presidents for what we offer in our municipality. And I know it would be a direct cost to our taxation, but uh, the, the turnaround and the benefits of showing what the municipality has um, pays back. So I look at it as an investment, not a cost. So that's, um, that's about all I have. The rest of anything that I've thought of is uh, already in the budget identified like at roads and so on. So, but my main focus is to look at all departments and and we need to focus on uh, on inflationary numbers. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you. All right, thank you, Larry. And if uh, staff, I hopefully like, even though some of these things might be in this priority list already, if you can pick them up anyways, and then flush it out later as far as if it's duplicated, just so we don't miss anything, but uh, um, I think a couple of things Larry said there are on this list already, but uh, just make sure we don't miss them. Um, so Barry, I'll go ahead. Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, um, Deputy Mayor Drill has hit the the target on Matheson property, and so has Larry. And you know, I've I've thought about this quite a bit. The uh, it wouldn't take that much for it to fix up the walking trails through there. You know, if we had a bobcat and some gravel it, it uh, would sure spruce it up in you know a day or two there um, the other thing is i've said it for years and it's never come to fruitation yet was everybody's budget you know <clears throat> depends on what department but it shouldn't depend on any department has anybody ever come in under budget you know, for a cost saving, you know, for the managers to look at it and say, oh, just a minute, I don't really need that, or I didn't spend. But everybody gets a budget of, we'll just use $1,000, for example. Well, I only needed $700 worth of that, but I got $300 I got to spend. 
<clears throat> and they usually end up spending it, whether they need to or not. And I know we're, we're probably not going to turn that around, but I, I think it's up to the managers to, to probably uh, try to see, you know, that, it, that it's taxpayers' dollars, and if we can save in any department rather than increase, it, it's great. And it shows that we're working for the taxpayer. That's about all I got to say. Yeah, and that's, uh, I think that comes back to the reserve, uh, everything that's surplus going back into the reserve at the end of the year, we can maybe keep better track of that uh, for the future. Um, I think that I hear that all over the place as far as, uh, you know, when we, ha when we have a surplus at the end of the year and it goes back into that department reserve, um, maybe highlight that Wendelin this year as far as, uh, you know, I know, I think with the fire department, we know that there's some money there that's been left over from last year. So um, maybe it can be highlighted in the budget as far as, and that could possibly be used for somewhere else or um, not necessarily like he might need it for the, the equipment, you know, but at least we know what's there. I think I understand what Barry's saying. Um, it's something that's easy for us to overlook. So, um, so did you have anything, Barry, anything else? No, that's good for now. Okay, Hart, go ahead. So I just had a question on that in terms of the reporting. So say, say I don't know, say last year the the fire department budgeted a million dollars, but they only spent eight hundred thousand dollars. So two hundred thousand goes into reserves. If next year they ask for one million, do you say that's a ten percent increase, or do you say it's like a thirty-five percent increase? So if they ask for like, a million. Yeah, the million before. Like what I'm saying is, so this year's increase, are we going off basically what they asked for last year or off what they spent with the actual at, budget was? We look at what the actuals were Yeah. and adjust from there. But then any increase or decrease would be based on the previous amount that was in the budget the previous year. Okay, sorry, you cut it. I didn't, um, I didn't... Difference down in some of the line items if we see that that's not necessary. Okay, but it, but it is like so if it was a million last year and it's a million one this year, but they only spent 800,000, you only count that as a 10% increase yes. in the budget. Okay. Um, okay, so is it my turn? Yeah. Okay. I'm roll glad every um, up the sleeves and be ready here. <laughs> well, nobody's been talking Matheson property, so hopefully we can move forward here in the budget and you know allocate some amount of money towards this because I'm hearing from everybody else exactly what I'm feeling in terms of you know let's get going on this, um, get some kind of thing figured out whether it's no ATVs or only walking certain walking paths and other paths for ATVs, but. It is there, uh, a lot of people in the community like to use it. I hear from a lot of people that they like to use it a lot more and wish it was fixed. So, so I'm glad that the council is in agreement with that. Um, stuff on the list, obviously the sewers and the wastewater plant. Um, the other thing, um, well, Jim, you've kind of referenced it, some kind of parks and rec project. I'd like to see that, if not you know, started next year. I know obviously some of this is going to depend on the grant money and whatnot, but we got to get some of this going. So whether it's a splash pad or whatever it is, I'd like to see some movement on that before the end of next next year. And just for the rest of council, I know there's items on the list here, but we talk about this all the time with some other members of council about us kicking cans around and kicking things down the road. Two items for my money that I think we could solve pretty easily. I know it'll cost a little bit of money, but given the amount of time we spent on them, I think a couple, a couple of these issues have been here since I got on council, which would be six years. So the one I've already spoke about would be the Kosh Lake Dock, and the other one would be the Fish Tatchery Road. That I understand um, to take care of these issues um, is going to take a little money from the township, but I don't see these issues going away in the future. So you know, the money you think you're saving now, you're just gonna end up spending in 
staff time and whatnot in the future. And probably in the long run, we're going to have solving these problems anyway. So I'll just leave it at that. Now I'm going to sound greedy. My list four pages, and you guys all just did it in one page. I really look bad here, but so I'll try and just short shorten it up. It, but some of the things are already on the list, so I uh, um, and some were to do with the budget, and I can leave that till the end. Is one of the uh, staff yesterday? We need an evening budget meeting um, just to give people a chance to be able to whether they take part or not. Um, that's something we missed when we were setting up the the times. Um, uh, so a lot of things have been talked about already and to go with the Matheson property as much as it needs, something that I know Deputy Mayor did a few years ago and I know how much it's being used in other municipalities is something to look at for the future would be start planning some sort of a small front end loader like a tractor that the department could use um to look after that matheson property properly and our ball diamonds and little things around we had a tractor but i'm talking a small tractor not a front loader to load the dump trucks or anything like that but something maybe like Gary said a skid steer um i don't know if that's the, the they're a lot more expensive than a tractor it's just something to start planning for the future we don't I'm not say this year but it's something that maybe we can start to look at something to help uh, Norwood users for a lot of different things, and their trail is a big thing that they, they keep up with. But uh, um, the, uh, we have the Patterson Park that uh, we took over this year, and there has to be something done there this summer to bring it in, it into shape. Uh, that was one of the things that we would do. So um, that's not a lot of money, but something that needs to be on the uh, plan for, for next summer to... Uh, to clean things up there. The uh, something I had, and I, I I didn't have as much money down as what the fire department did, but our priority list is already getting outdated. Um, and I would like to see us talk about doing a proper strategic plan. You only get what you pay for, and what we have is the worst thing I've ever seen. Um, and I would really like to see us have a proper plan and, and work with it. Um, to find out where we're at and where we're going because uh, um, that's what guides us through and most of the stuff on our priority list is pretty well done or it's in motion so uh, I'm just thinking that it would be good moving forward uh, to try and get something going there um, that's pretty well all I had I did have uh, um, some things with regards to uh, our reserves there and looking at them I think that we've all talked about that uh, um, we need to understand them better and uh, see what kind of surpluses are in there because just take this week for instance we were just given 1.5 million dollars to be used for whatever we need um, it's not tied to anything so we have lots of money and uh, we have lots of needs so we need to really spend it wisely but it needs to be spent not to put in the bank and look at the interest every every month or two it's uh, something to to do we have a lot of needs so um the hundred thousand dollars that we were given yesterday from the province and the feds was for um to help us get our office open um if there's other things you can use it for too but that's what they would like to see it used for so that's just a start we can apply for more if we need it so we need to get on to it. And, uh, um, and I know staff is already working on that. So um, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we can have a plan in place to get the office open for walk-in traffic. Uh, if the numbers settle down a little bit here, that's the other issue right now. So um, with that, I think that's, uh, um, and I, the other thing that we need to look at is we have a huge cost coming for George Street and we need to start planning a bit of a reserve for that to, uh, um, you know, it goes along with everything else we're doing. The uh, um, wastewater treatment plant, um, we're going to start spending money there. I've seen a few, it listed a couple of times throughout the budget. Um, we need to start planning for that stuff and, and not be, we know it's going to cost us a fortune, so let's get something going there. So Hart, go ahead. Hey, just in terms of that, I don't know, it used to be a big 
a job for Wendell isn't a big one, but can we can we get some kind of a an estimate or figure in terms of like you said if if we're, we're planning like what's the total we're going to need to do you know between wastewater the sewers so I don't know whether it's you know two million four million eight million but if we could get a figure and I think with a figure at least it would help us in terms of planning or putting away money right and knowing how much we might have to put away. And I understand some of those figures we might not know at the moment, but as close to them as we could get, you know, yeah. per se. Do you have some of those figures and that will be discussed once we hit those um, departments. Okay. Um, just a comment on Matheson Park, because that seems to be the consensus of the council members that they want to do something there. There is a the new grant that came up that Barry had mentioned about a month ago and then um, Jim had sent me an email yesterday about it and part of that grant process is trails so I'm going to be looking at that and I think it's mid-December the grant has to be in by so I might have something coming to council on that if you so desire to look at that as your potential grant opportunity. Yeah that that Thing. So the hundred thousand yesterday was just like a, the start of that grant. Like they're giving everybody a hundred thousand, but they're expecting you're going to be applying for more. So that's where we'll, you know, like you say, the Matheson is for distancing and things like that. But uh, it is there is a recreation portion to it. Go ahead, Barry. Yeah, I think the closing date on that was December twenty first. Yeah. And, uh, um, that's something we have to talk about too. Is you know, there's a lot of grants being available right now. And the worst of it is, Wendland's tied up with the budget and the whole ball of wax. I just wondered if maybe, Bob, you could get someone in the office to maybe uh, take on some of these uh, grants and, and look them up and see if we, uh, if we qualify. And that way we won't miss the, uh, the date for closing, you know, if we do qualify, because uh, if it's there, I want to take them because we can't afford to pass most of these grants up. The um, moving, you know, I'll just leave it at that for right now, because I know that, that uh, each department has, uh, Oh, all their budgets, and we'll get into that at a later date. So, I have the other stuff. Okay. So, the other things that uh, were on this list, and you can look at that, Bob, as far as if somebody could help Wendland with that, because it, it is going to be a busy month here. Um, so, some of the things that were on the other sheets there that, uh, you know, will be something to look at was the transfer station um, and things over there, um, some changes maybe in. I did ask Bob to not print the cards until we have every year we we get into budget and then when we try to do any adjustments it's all the cards are already printed so um, maybe it should come earlier than later to talk about you know transfer station hours we did a little bit of a tweak there last meeting um, we need to look at the rest of the transfer stations and be prepared when the cards are going to be printed if there's any changes to happen for next year the coverall building for the the work yard there was on the, the list there. I don't know whether that came from me or I had that on my list. So I'm thinking it might've been something I mentioned at one time, but when I see that grader sitting outside down there, it's always been a little thing that I hate seeing that thing sitting in the sun or in, in the weather. Uh, it's a huge investment. And I think it would be something good for the, while we're limited on space, it would be a little more or days to keep the weather. Uh, private road grant, we've all been receiving the emails and I know I bring it up every year. It's, uh, that's something that I think needs to be a minor thing as far as, uh, um, I think they had a formula that was like fourteen fifteen thousand uh, dollars $15,000. It's something that I think is long overdue that uh, when we get into the budget, we'll, uh, that'll have to get hashed out there. So. Um, that's all on my list. Uh, 
um, transportation to cover all buildings and then everything else that I talked about there, Fish Factory Road, I know Hart touched on that and seen a couple thumbs up. So um, that's something that we need to get a plan in place. And with recreation, there's some, something needs to happen, whether it's to authorize a, a design so we know what it's going to look like, a picture's worth a thousand words, um, and get a plan in place. But uh, that's where I'm at. Um, we went around the table. I don't know, has anybody got anything else to add to this? Uh, um, go ahead, Barry. Yeah, just one thing, Mr. Mayor, is uh, the plan for the fix on the um, storm sewers in the municipality. Uh, it's great to fix them, but we've got nowhere for the water to go. So I think that should be uh, first priority in that project would be to get after the the federal government, and now is the time to do it because see, Monsef is is finally getting around to getting some money handed out here and there. Um, but we have to get somewhere to put the water, and there's no use of building a retention pond beside a house or two houses and flooding them out, and then we'd be sued again. So it's great to do all this work, but if you got nowhere to put the water. It isn't worth a darn, you know, it's- You're breaking up a bit. Uh, that should be the first step in that. I'm breaking up. You're freezing up, Jim. Is it me that's freezing up? Yeah, you're freezing up pretty it's, bad, Jim. Yeah, I can. I'll just come up video on state, or internet unstable. Um, okay. So did yeah. you hear me? That's what I'm at, Barry, when we're talking about George Street, is am I breaking up now? Yeah. Okay. Can you see me? I'm nodding my head. <laughs> okay, that's what I, I can't tell. Oh. It's still breaking up. up on my end. Talk slower. That's the quietest you've been, Jim. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to sound of was last meeting. Okay. Well, can you hear me now, Barry? A little bit. That's what I meant when I said George Street is that that's a boss one at the bottom. You've got to start at the bottom and work up and yeah, you're totally right. We need to start planning that now. Yeah, and I think the sooner we have a meeting with Monsef, you uh, you usually meet with her quite often. So, um, you know, find out if there is. I keep watching to see if there's any monies available for that that type of project. But it's it's federal that we have to go through. So uh, you can use your contact there, Jim. Yeah, I think I'm breaking up. Though. <laughs> so we went around the table i i think i'm gonna have to call this <laughs> so is it, is it working we can't understand you Yes, through you, Mayor Martin, I think we're, we're having some technical difficulties here. So if I could just address briefly that uh, the comments from Councillor Pomeroy. With respect to any of the engineering projects, further to our uh, recent special council meeting with Plan Mac, uh, there's two arms to that project. Uh, clearly, we need to understand and ensure that the uh, stormwater flows uh, uh, are working well for us and, and we're bringing that water to the proper place, but also there's the uh, money side of the project as well. So we're tackling both sides of the project here uh, at the same time. Uh, we need to ensure funds are available uh, for all of these things. Uh, so as council expressed earlier, it is a busy time. We will have uh, several staff persons involved and whoever needs to be involved, whether it's a department head uh, working with the treasurer or otherwise, to ensure that uh, we have our hands involved in every grant opportunity that's out there. Um, if there's money involved, we, we will be looking at it and we will certainly attempt to get what we can. Thank you, Bob.
I don't know. You didn't break up on my end. Am I still breaking up? You're doing good now, Jim. All right. So, so these these grants that were given out yesterday, the one thing that they kept reminding us is it's 80% federal, 20% provincial, but the provincial is the one that issues them out, like puts them out. Um, it's a it's a weird setup, but uh, anyways, it's uh, so we do have to get on to Monsif because 80% is going to come from the federal government. So that's all I have on that. So I and we will go ahead, Dave. You're muted, Dave. I'm not sure how far we are. Are we just about done or whatever? I just didn't, uh, Councillor Ellis, myself, and uh, Bob and John Smallwood um, and Ryan viewed a uh, facility the other day. And I wonder if what time that we are going to discuss that. It's not today, is not time to do it. I just didn't want it to fall off the fall off the uh, wagon. So Bob, if you could just kind of comment on that, maybe in, coming in the future, we're going to have a discussion about that. There we go. Sorry, through you, Mayor Martin. Yes, absolutely. Uh, further to the comments of uh, Deputy Mayor Giroux, uh, we did have a tour of, a, uh, of the medical center facility um, a few days ago. Uh, Councillor Ellis also joined us. We will be having specific discussions about that facility and others. Um, and we have a bit of an ambitious plan that we'd like to bring forward to council and that will be coming in, in the next few weeks. Okay. All right then. So that's all I have on my list and I think I've heard from everybody else. So um, the reason for the meeting today was our priorities and I think uh, we've all stated where our priorities are and we may not all agree on that but uh, um, it'll all get flushed out in the budget so the uh, so the next step will be these this will be entered in and then at our, and then we'll start going through budget uh, departments individually and really go through it thoroughly so do you need anything else Wendelin? Um, no I just maybe if you wanted to like some of the stuff we've already talked about, but under the waste section, there was one big proposal that we were looking at. And that'll had, be a part. That's why I think we should have the waste uh, early on the, like it, it possibly, I don't know, you've already itemized what's gonna be at, but that's gonna be some good discussion, I think around transfer station and, uh, cause they all tie together, um, whether it's a waste scale and tags and, yeah. and all the other good things that go with it. So um, it should be sooner than later. So we have time to-, uh, to So that has been incorporated in the budget that okay. is on those sheets. So just to let you know, when you are looking at the sheets that you received the other day, that is in there. Perfect. Larry, go ahead. Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, a couple of those items are kind of like no brainers, like I can share, uh, through a council discussion, you know, we'll be in agreement there, but uh, the one for the weight scale, does the county play any role in the cost there? No. No. We can't, we can't tap the county for any money? No. What about grants? No. Yeah. OMPF, we could do OMPF. <laughs> yeah. Okay, just wanted to ask, thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right, then. So if there's nothing else here for the good of the cause, I'm going to uh, look for a motion to adjourn. And it looks like Barry, Barry, you're going to make that motion. Okay, good for you. And then Hart. So all in favor. And that's carried. Thanks a lot, guys. And Thank you. Have a good weekend, everybody.